Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In this episode, we've got something completely different. We've got our first information about the very first major patch for Moonbreaker and it's the blog post has just come up not that long ago at all and we've had a few posts from the community manager Donya over on Discord and I'm excited to just go through a few bits of it, let you guys know what's coming, let you know what I'm going to be doing, what I'm excited for and we'll see how it goes from there. So, as you can see, Business model changes coming with Zax's story update. Early access 1.1. So there's a lot of lot of sort of discussion going on about the business model, how it's going to be going forward, what's appropriate for early access, what's going to be happening down the line, and we've got a few answers to this so far. So read through it for you now. We've got Hello Moonbreakers. Our first content patch is releasing tomorrow, October 27th. So that's so soon. We weren't sure when it was going to be. It was originally slated as being end of October, early November. So fits in exactly. Again, devs are doing what they said they were going to do. And I feature a ton of community-driven changes to gameplay, but most importantly, have completely overhauled the business model to remove pulsars, boosters, and blanks. So, if you don't know, pulsars were the paid currency. I had some in my account from buying the Founders Pack. Boosters were booster packs, you open them up, you get new characters. And blanks are sort of the in-game currency that you could use to buy boosters, and that was, I think that was pretty much it at that point in time, was uh, the only really use for blanks. So they're all gone completely. As a part of major part of the early access process is taking community feedback on board and making some big and exciting changes. I've been reading, evaluating everything you've suggested on our Discord and Note board, which absolutely the commu community are really involved in these. I've been you know active on both of these as have many other people, uh, which already helped to guide our decision to remove cargo run contracts from Moonbreaker, which was one of the you know, great decisions made early on, and they've been diligently diligently reviewing every area of the game. Based on your ongoing feedback, we're realigning to make Moonbreaker better reflect our early access goals. So important to note here is to reflect the early access goals. So it's not necessarily the long-term strategy, but early access has got to have a purpose. It's not just here for the sake of it. It's not just, you know, you get access to a game early. It's for additional development, for learning, for adapting, and that sort of thing. So that's a really important part of this. Some of the major business model changes coming alongside tomorrow's content update. Pulsars will no longer be able to purchase or exchange for in-game items during early access. Now, it doesn't say ever. It does say during early access, so there is a good chance that this may be coming back in the future. Units will be unlocked automatically with the base game. Yes, that means no more booster boxes. It also means that all units added with each new season will be unlocked automatically too. So every four months, this is 25 characters and a captain every single release for com completely free. You know, as long as you're in early access, no additional cost whatsoever. So if you play $30 for the base game, you're getting every single expansion for the early access. So we don't know how long the early access is going to be. There was discussion about it being potentially a few years. So this is a lot of content that you're getting for one cost. So for anyone that's even vaguely sort of concerned about the price point, those concerns have gone anyway. Personally, I didn't think it was issue in the first place, but some people still did. This has taken all of that and you wipe those concerns immediately off the map. And next we've got here, Blanks and Merits are no longer an in-game currency. will be replaced with Sparks. So Sparks can be used to upgrade a unit's rarity. As a reminder, rarity is cosmetic only. So the one thing I'd say here is with them removing Blanks and Merits and replacing it with Sparks, that to me implies that there is a chance that they want to keep the name Blanks and Merits for something else. They haven't just reworked Merits into Sparks. They've actually changed it you know, to something completely different. So while Blanks and Merits have gone, that's absolutely fine. Again, this is for early access goals. And we, like we said earlier, pulsars may come back. There may be a world in which blanks and merits do too. But Spark is what we're going to be looking at for the meantime. The in-game store is being disabled. All pulsar purchases will be automatically refunded via Steam with the details below. So this is just a bit of sort of quality of life, as in sort of making sure they're looking out for the community, making sure there's no you know, ill will anywhere, and anyone who's already paid any money for in-game things can get it refunded if it no longer exists, which is perfect. Can't ask for anything more. Uh, Founders Pack Pulsars will be replaced with a new Zax and Slopper skin. 
personally, I'm very excited about this. I love Zax. I love playing with him. He's my favourite captain at the moment anyway. Uh, and it's been confirmed in the Discord that Zax and Slopper is the name of the skin. It's not a Zax skin and a new character called Slopper's skin. It is a Zax and Slopper. So instead of riding a hologram or a hologram projector, we're assuming Zax is going to be riding some sort of creature called Slopper. And players who already own the Founders Pack will automatically receive the skin. So I'm looking forward to getting that straight away. I'll probably be playing that day one. And the Founders Pack can be refunded upon request if you're not happy with the changes. Again, another really nice option is that because the Founders Pack came with initial content, it was certain things involved in there, like the Pulsars and things like that, you can just refund it if you're not happy with it. And frankly, I think this is better than the original Founders Pack, so I don't know why you wouldn't do. I don't know why you would do, but some people will be glad for that option. Personally, I, I literally think this is just better. Season track progression will now be faster and include some new exciting cosmetic rewards. So season track has had sort of a lot of criticism, especially about the sort of the ramping up experience for each level throughout. So it starts, you know, starts fairly easy and then it takes more and more experience as you go up. And there's going to be a few things added in there. I believe there's also a look at potentially a skin coming and maybe even some like uh, earlier level rewards. I think it goes into that a little bit later in this article. That's great news. People were a little bit worried about season track, so we can all just you know, breathe a little easier. We'll find out quite what that is tomorrow. We don't know the exact details, but there's more details to come following this post as well. So it may even be that we need another video tomorrow to talk about the actual in-game changes as well. So why are you removing monetization? I mean, this is a big question because a lot of people are concerned for sort of you know, the well-being of the game and that sort of thing. But it, this is a, a quality decision. You know, this is being made so that early access is valuable. So it's important to us, especially during early access, to build an amazing game alongside a community and focus on making Moonbreaker as fun as possible. If you've had any interaction with the devs whatsoever, be it Discord, Reddit, anything at all, you know that this is absolutely their focus. You know, they've been working on making the game fun and interactive and you know, even other features that everyone wants and are going to be coming into play later on have been sort of sidelined almost intentionally just to make sure that the game is to the level that they want it to first before bringing in things like ranked mode. And, you know, you don't want to bring ranked mode into a game that's you know, skewed in one direction. So we already know there are balance com changes coming to address that. This is just sort of another follow-on from that same ethos. Early access is a time for us to experiment and improve the game, and the monetization in its current form was affecting that goal. So we're moving it to focus on making the best game that we can before we leave early access. Will I get anything for the blanks I've already collected? Your blanks will be automatically converted into sparks, previously merits. Sparks can be used to upgrade your units to higher cosmetic levels, so rare, legendary, etc. And we have plans to continue to expand on the sparks and rarity systems with future updates, but rarity is expected to remain completely cosmetic in nature. So I'm really glad to hear that there are going to be upgrades to the rarity system, because at the moment there are sort of... It doesn't feel like that big of a jump in between. Honestly, when I've used some of my legendary characters... I haven't noticed too much of the difference between them and the common characters. I have once or twice on opponents, but not too often. So I'm looking forward to this being something that they develop in future. It's like I said, it's not necessarily coming this patch, but that's something they're going to be looking at, and I'm absolutely you know, here for that. What will happen to my unopened boosters when the change happens? So obviously, if boosters being removed, you're going to have some in the uh, you know, in your account. They'll also be converted into sparks. Everything's turning into sparks, or pulsars are just you know, disappearing, probably temporarily, but it might be for quite some time. All units during early access will be automatically unlocked with common rarity. You can then use sparks to optionally upgrade to higher rarity. And again, rarity only affects cosmetic aspects of units. So again, everything's just turning into sparks. It's quite straightforward on that front. We don't know the ratio yet, and that's something I'll discuss in a moment. So... Will my current season track progress be affected by the changes? Yes. So boosters and blanks that were previously rewarded in the season track are being replaced with a combination of sparks, additional decoy packs, and new profile images. And unrelated to this change, they've also up oh, sorry, adjusted the XP levels for the season track as they felt it was currently too much of a grind. So this was a huge amount of feedback going you know, to the devs, and they've absolutely listened. Your amount of XP... Sorry, your amount of XP will remain the same, so expect your season track level to increase when you log on for the first time after the update. Lots of people wanting access to things like the metallic paints, the Extilio skin. I've still not seen an Extilio in game. I've seen the metallic paints a couple of times. So this is great news for anyone who's you know, wanting to work towards that. And hopefully 
This change will help players achieve the rewards they'd like much quicker. Absolutely, that's what I want. Will I get the new rewards for tiers I've already earned? Yes. I don't think we need to go into too much detail of this, but absolutely, yes. So it does say here there's also a new award for level 16 of the track, and so you know, at least we know one thing's changed. I imagine probably more than that, but good to have. Uh, so any Pulsar purchases you made since early access will be refunded, and you'll automatically receive an email from Steam confirming your refund to your Steam wallet, and even better, no action required at all. So anyone who's got it doesn't need to do anything. And again, clarifying here, you don't need to do anything. Uh, it will take place within a few hours of the patch as well, so it's going to come back to you very quickly. It could take up to a day, so we appreciate patience. Again, keep an eye out on your email, so Steam will let you know when there's that refund heading through. Uh, the Founders Pack that you've purchased will remain in your inventory, and they'll be replacing the Pulsars that came with the exclusive Sin, sorry, skin, sin skin that we mentioned earlier. Uh, previously, the pack was non-refundable, but because of this change, they're temporarily offering refunds to the Founders Pack. So you can do so until December 6th, which is actually quite a big window as well. So I suppose that gives time for people who you know are playing it go off, you know, don't necessarily hear about the game for a while, come back and realise, then absolutely you've got a decent window in which to get that back as well. Uh, what content do I get when I buy the base game for $30 now? So it's the same as before, but you now include all of the uh, you know, additional content for free, for free all the way throughout Early Access. And all units are now unlocked by default during Early Access at the common level rarity. And lastly, we've got, why should I buy Moonbreaker now instead of waiting for the final product? Buying it during Early Access allows you to directly shape the future of the game. This I can 100% confirm. I've absolutely spoken to the devs on multiple occurrences. I'm not, you know, a I'm not a big influential person. I'm not here with any weight behind what I say. I've just got opinions that I think would work. I've played a lot of games and I have my own opinions on it. And I genuinely feel like they've been listened to by people at all different levels in the organization. So absolutely, you can actually help shape the future of the game. And it helps helps them make the game the game that we want to play. You also get access to tons of new content such as units, maps, captains, and more. As the game is in actively in development, it will have some issues with bugs, features, uh, balance, and gameplay in a constant state of change. So there's actually one of the devs who works constantly on sort of you know, bug fixes, chatting in the Discord, finding things out, finding new ways to fix it. It's a really int you know, integrated process. People discuss it with each other. It's great. I mean, I've really not had that many issues with bugs and things like that. Balance, a little bit, but that we know that's being addressed you know, quite rapidly again. If you're waiting for something more polished, we suggest you join our mailing list to be among the first to hear about when Moonbreaker will exit early access. So, besides the actual game modes that are available wanting maybe a bit of expansion of things, I personally think the game is quite polished. You know, it could do with more features, which will be developed over time, but in terms of actual gameplay and the game itself, polished is good. I mean, it's a good quality game. So, again, you can wait for something more polished, but I would say as it stands, it's pretty good. We really believe that Moonbreaker is truly something special and it will only improve in quality with community input. Again, covered that a few times already, it really does. Your passion and love for the game has already inspired several major changes and we're only one month into early access. So it feels like longer. I feel like I've been playing this game for months and months and I obviously I was part of the playtest, but this, this has become sort of quite a consistent part of what I do. I can't believe it's only been a month. Uh, we want to continue to build this game alongside the community and make Moonbreaker something that will endure for many more years to come. Again, all happy with that. Once again, we cannot thank you enough for all the feedback you've already provided for Moonbreaker. We want to keep making impactful changes and hope that these are just the first of many that will take Moonbreaker to new incredible heights. Look out for more information on the gameplay changes in our patch notes tomorrow. And we've made some balance changes to Astra as well as a handful of ship assists, remove some of the randomness in the game and much more, all based on your feedback. We can't wait for you to get your hands on the content patch tomorrow. So about this as well, the much more. I'm really curious as to what the much more is going to be, because we knew about Astra, we knew about the ship assists, remove some of the randomness is probably referring to the bridge changes. We know there's a Zach's audio book, or sorry, audio drama coming, and possibly a new map, but much more? I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to seeing what else there's going to be. There's potentially a few other balance changes as well, but that's really exciting. So, all in all, I think this is great. 
I'm really excited for this. There's a load of people in the Discord absolutely going mad over the changes. I've seen people whose names I haven't ever seen before pop up talking about how they're looking at coming back to the game and they want to see more of it. It's really been good for the sort of the you know, the morale of the community. The community seems to be rallying around this and absolutely over the moon for it. And there's one thing that has uh, come up a couple of times is with booster boxes and merits and blanks all being converted to sparks, what to do with what you've currently got. Now, personally, if I remember the cargo runs, cargo run contracts initially existed and they were removed, and it turned out that you were probably a bit better off if you could have used them all up in advance and get, you know, get the currency from them as it turned into blanks, which is exactly what I tried to do. I didn't get all the way through, but I made good progress on it. So with the boosters, given that you're only going to be able to convert things into sparks, and sparks are only for upgrading rarity, what I'm going to be doing is opening of spending all of my blanks on boosters, I'm going to open every single booster that I've got, and I'm going to try and upgrade some models to additional rarity as well. So we're guaranteed at least one legendary. Keep an eye out for my next video that will be coming up as, you know, fairly soon. I'm going to try and get these out fairly rapidly so we can just focus on getting content with the new patch as soon as we can. And hopefully I'll see you in that one. If you're as excited about this, just let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think is going to be the biggest change out of these you. Know, I wouldn't even say patch notes, just the business model changes. But yeah, let me know what you're happy about, what you're excited about, or if you're unhappy about anything. You do you like the idea of booster packs and that sort of thing? I'm sad they're going away. You know more of that sort of you. Know, what am I going to get element? Let me know either way. Don't forget like, comment, subscribe, all the standard YouTube things. It really does, you know, just make me feel good every time I read them. I get every single YouTube notification on my phone, so I'll be checking it every single time one comes through. And other than that, have a good day. Thank you.